This piece of wood should be perfect. Just the right size for a Canon EF lens. It's a nice hardwood. Should be sturdy enough for some shaping with power tools. I need to inlay this old magnifying glass lens. I'm attempting to make a speed booster lens adapter. A speed booster takes the light from a full frame lens, compresses it down to a smaller size to get a wider field of view on a smaller sensor camera. These things are usually at least a hundred bucks, but I figured I'd try to make my own using stuff I had laying around. Now, I'm not approaching this very scientifically, I'm just using a random piece of magnifying glass that I had. I'll try it at different distances from the sensor and see if I can get something usable out of it. The goal is to take the circle of light the lens projects and compress it down to a smaller size so that a crop sensor camera will see more of the image. The sensor is 0.66 times smaller, so that's what we're hoping for. I'm stealing the hardware I need from a regular dumb adapter without any focal reduction. These adapters can be found for like 20 bucks. This basic proof of concept little adapter is as far as I got when I started this project a few months ago. But it's been on my mind ever since. It theoretically should work, so when I got my new studio set up, I jumped right back in. Now I'm choosing to adapt Canon EF lenses to a micro four thirds mount in this project. I'm planning to use this on an E-mount camera, but I chose micro four thirds because with an additional dumb adapter, I'll be able to use it on either E-mount or micro four thirds. With everything roughed in and test fitted, I can start to experiment with my focusing distance. The measurements between all my glass elements here have to be pretty precise for things to work out. For this test, my focus distance was extremely close, meaning my glass elements are too far from the camera's sensor. The first step I'm going to take is moving my piece of adapter glass towards the sensor further by knocking down this edge. I started out with a file to be careful and not break the piece, but I realized that would take forever and graduated up to a beveled router bit. This actually worked way smoother than I anticipated and I was pretty pleased with the result. With the glass sitting a bit deeper, the lens now didn't touch my adapter glass, which is nice, and my maximum focus distance was better, but I had further to go. I managed to get that ledge knocked down a little further, and then my router decided to kick the bucket. I wasn't recording audio here, but I was a bit disappointed I've only had it for a year. Got a lot of use out of it, but that's clearance rack harbor freight for you. In any case, before it died, it put out one last good enough chamfer, and the glass sits pretty nice and deep now. This process is all about patience and taking it slow. Just testing, knocking down a bit more, testing again until the focus distance is correct. Another factor here is that when using electronic lenses, the contacts poke out a little extra. So I was happy to see the correct distance for this glass element ended up being far enough back that I could still fit electronic lenses. For the correct focusing distance, I actually had to end up moving this piece of glass so far back that it would come in contact with the rear lens mount. But with a little bit of shaving down of the rear flange, that was not a problem. With everything roughed into place for one final focusing distance test, I was pleased to see that this time I actually had proper focusing range. Now, I hadn't tried to get any actual shots with this thing yet, but I'd seen enough to know that I was going to get something somewhat usable as a final result. Now I just have to take a bit off the top of this wood body to achieve the same measurements when I put the front lens mount on. It's at this point in projects like this where everything gets even more fun. I'm pretty confident now that this thing is going to work. I don't know what it's going to look like in the end, but I know that all the work I've put in so far isn't going to waste, isn't going to end up with a totally failed project that's never finished. So now I can kind of relax a bit, finish off the last few functional things, and then make the adapter look pretty. 
I left the wood bit rough this whole time because there's no point in finishing it if the thing isn't going to work. But now it's finally time for some good old wood shaping. Oh. I have a belt sander. It'd be way easier. Now, similar to the router, this was a clearance pickup during my time at Harbor Freight. At least for a couple projects. Hopefully we get some good cuts out of it. I haven't used one of these since shop class in middle school, but how complicated can it be? I thought this knob was a tensioner at first, but it actually controls the pull to the left or right. Maybe I should read the instructions, actually. Eh, just kidding. For the 65 bucks or whatever I paid for this thing two years ago, I'm pretty pleased with how well it works. It's kind of mesmerizing to be able to see all the material getting knocked off so quick. I'm happy to finally have a use for it. I bought this on my last day at Harbor Freight to make use of my employee discount before I left. It's just been sitting in a box for about two years. For a little bit, it actually functioned as my nightstand. But now that I have this space, it's finally out here doing some work. I'm adding a 10 degree slope to this whole ring. No particular reason, just because I can now. Looks pretty cool, I think. It's kind of strange to have a somewhat decent wood project coming out of my studio. I'm usually all function, no form, but in this case, this thing's pretty sweet, actually. Anyway, with that being said, now it's time to ruin it with some of my usual jank. I like spray wood stain. Helps get in all the cracks and I don't have to dirty any brushes. Here's a ridiculous looking jig I've come up with. It is a Dremel stuck in a vise up against a clamped down can of wood stain. It's the only thing I could find that perfectly fit the radius of my adapter. The idea here is to get a somewhat stable rotation up against the Dremel tool so I can engrave these little rings into the adapter. I wanted to add a little bit of color to make this thing pop on whatever camera I put it on. I also added the little red alignment dot for mounting. Looks pretty cool, I think, and with a little bit of shine from my polyurethane finish, this is going to look really sharp once the glass is in and the metal hardware is mounted. I also painted the inside of the adapter with some black acrylic paint to minimize internal reflections where the glass is mounted. And while I waited for all that to dry, I played with my belt sander some more. I don't know, this thing's just too much fun. The one last functional thing on this adapter that I should have tackled earlier is this spring-loaded pin. This needs a little channel to move up and down to lock the lens in place. I definitely should have done this before finishing all my surfaces, but honestly I got a little excited and forgot about it. But luckily the wood I was working with was hard enough that this didn't cause any major structural issues. With a bit of fiddling, I got the tolerances good enough that the spring worked. The back of the lens mount hardware also needs these little springs that keep the lens in place. But with all that sorted out, my DIY lens adapter actually fits surprisingly well. With that working beautifully, my last step before mounting the glass is painting the rear lens mount black. I'm using this Rust-Oleum camouflage paint. It comes out super grainy and dries ultra matte, which is perfect for this application where I'm trying to reduce internal glare. I wasn't happy with how glossy my previous coat of black was, so I'm actually going to spray paint the wood part too, which actually turned out really well. Once that dried, it was time for the final fitting of the glass element. It kind of hurts me to use hot glue here, I don't like hot glue normally, and the rest of this whole thing is pretty premium materials, but hot glue is a decent way to semi-permanently mount that glass, so I can take it out later if I want to make adjustments, although I think in the future I'd like to replace it with some kind of rubber gasket that friction fits it in place. Fully assembled, the Speed Booster has a really nice weight to it, and I think it looks pretty sick too. Now here's the part that I've been waiting for since I came up with this idea. Heading out and actually getting some shots with this thing. 
For the rest of the video, every shot is through this speed booster. The first thing I noticed shooting with this is just how much wider it is. These shots were at the wide end of my 24 to 105, and this shot was at the long end of it. I'll talk more about this in a sec. The next thing I noticed was the kind of dreamy effect of the focal plane being distorted at the edges. Kind of gives a miniature toy effect to everything. This makes it harder to pull focus for wide subjects, but when your subject is in the center of the frame, it looks pretty sick. For this first filming mission, I just went to Lowe's and then met up with someone on Facebook Marketplace to buy an embroidery machine. I got this to do some hats, but I'll talk more about that another time. It's still shocking to me just how wide the 24 to 105 can get on a crop sensor camera with the speed booster. So when I went out for my second film outing, I brought the 16 to 35 as well. This thing gets stupid wide. You can even see vignette marks at the corners of the screen from a full frame lens on a crop sensor camera. So, hell yeah. <laughs> I did some tests, and the amount of focal reduction I'm getting on this speed booster is about 0.62x. To beat the APS-C crop, we only need 0.66x. So using this adapter on a crop sensor camera allows you to see more of the image circle than you would on a regular full-frame camera. Obviously with more distortion and lens flares, though. So with the adapter, my 16 to 35 is more like a 10 to 22. Now, you might also notice how messy and shallow the focus is on a lot of these shots. I had my 16 to 35 set at f2.8 all the way open, and with the compression, it only gets brighter. So you can really go off the rails with the dreamy look with a setup like this, but the 24 to 105, I was shooting at a more reasonable f6.3. Now, one downside to making a fully manual adapter like this is that there's no electronic control. Both of the lenses I'm using here have the aperture controlled by wire, so I have to mount them on a regular adapter, change the aperture, and then move it to this adapter and it's stuck there. So my 16 to 35 was stuck wide open for this whole shoot. Since there's no electronics, there's also no lens stabilization. So when shooting super long, the IBIS on the camera itself sometimes doesn't cut it. But for something I put together in a couple days with only stuff I had laying around, I'm actually really surprised by how good the results are. I wouldn't put this on my A cam all the time, but for certain shots or projects where I can afford to be more diligent about focusing, I will totally use this in the future. So for a final in-studio test of this thing, here's the 24 to 105 on a regular adapter at 24. And here is exactly the same shot, same lens, same settings, but with the speed booster. You can really tell how much brighter it is, almost too bright now. And for an ultra wide test, here's my Sony 10 to 18, no speed booster, all the way at 10. And here's the 16 to 35 on the speed booster. So the 16 is now basically as wide as the 10. I noticed after editing those clips, the speed booster adds a slight skew, which I think is from the lens being slightly out of line that could be fixed. But do I recommend building one of these? I don't know, it's fun and it's cheap in theory, but you know, for the price, if you want usability, get a regular speed booster. But as a quirky little thing for my toolkit, I'm totally gonna use this alongside my C-mount lenses. It makes my nice Canon lenses look more like the weird old dreamy C-mount lenses. And at the end of the day, I had a good time making it. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the more technical video. We'll be back to absolute junk and shenanigans next week. Thank you for your time.